Welcome. I'm Carolyn Harris, representing the Wilmington Historical Commission. Welcome to the Butters Farmhouse. And I'm going to take you on a brief tour. Um, we're going to see quite a number of different elements of the home from generations going back to the 17th century. This is the kitchen. And one thing you probably notice is the height of the ceiling. I'm about five, one and a half, and it's very easy for me to put my hand on the ceiling. Walking through here, one of my favorite uh, elements of the house is this threshold. And I keep looking at it and thinking how many people have walked through this over the, the centuries. One thing I want to point out to you that has been um, identified by some of the historical experts that have come through is this door, which they feel was probably in another house and moved here. And they have dated this as early as 1640. It's probably one of the oldest elements of the house. Uh, looking at this, we, we know that the fireplace at one time was moved. But um, we feel that this, uh, this fireplace is probably goes back to um, the 1830s, 1820s, 1830s. It's very shallow, but clearly it was used for cooking. It has a wonderful beehive oven. And I want to show you the, the elements on the, the door itself, the, the, um, the design. This is part of the, the original. And of course, one of the, the delights of this room is the summer beaming. And if you take a look at the summer beaming, you can see how it was hand hewn. The west side here, this, uh, you can see the original beaming. And over in here, this is uh, part of the original. And if you notice the pockets on it, the original house was a garrison. And um, of course, keep in mind that when this house was built, this was a, a major path that was used by Native Americans. And um, there was a constant fear of uh, attack so that um, the original house was that garrison. This is, um, this was one of the, I guess it would be the uh, primary bedroom. It's certainly the largest one. Um, the fireplace has been filled in. But what was really exciting when we had people come through um, from Boston University is the the feather-edged wood in this closet. Of course, the closets, I guess that would be an area that you would really maintain the historical integrity because, you know, people just didn't spend a lot of time renovating closets. So we have some fine example of wood in this closet. Moving on, we have a second bedroom here that's a very, it's a smaller bedroom, but um, the last tenant left us a comfortable chair. Um, if you take a look at this room, particularly, you can see the slum to the building. You know, there's no question that we have our work cut out for us here. We're going into the attic now. And this, I think, is the most exciting find. Turn the light on that will help. If you take a look at the beaming, and I think you can see it more from this angle, um, you've got the wooden pegs. You have Roman numerals on each of the beams. So that when it was constructed, they, they used it you know, to put it together. So it was clearly, one of the experts indicated that these were probably from another house uh, and reused, as they did during the, the early uh, 
colonial period. I mean, you know, waste want, want not kind of thing. They, they used everything and reused it uh, to their advantage. If you can notice the, the pegs going through, this is a good example of a peg over here, the wooden pegs. We had a historian come through uh, from Drake, and he was very interested in these boards, referring to them as king's boards because of the, the width of them. And of course, in early colonial America, wood was very scarce in England, so the forests were known as king's forests, and the larger trees were used for the masts of, of the British Navy. So. Um, he indicated that he thought these were very rare. We are not sure at this point. Um, the Historical Commission, through the generosity of the people and, and businesses in, in Wilmington, um, have at this point a little less than, and through grants that we've worked on, we have a little less than $100,000 to work on. It will cost significantly more. Because it's almost 300 years old, and we'd like it to last another 300 years for generations of, of Wilmington residents to come to see, uh, to see this amazing house that has, you know, and I've said it again and again, God knows why this house survived, but it has survived for 300 years. And uh, we want to make sure that it's done, it's done correctly. We'd like uh, someone living here, we're a caretaker, a family, so that it's open to the public and that the people of Wilmington who have sent in donations can come here and, and can really marvel at the history of this house, which reflects the history of Wilmington.